Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential system, sort of. X and Y are separated, so I guess you could call this not a system, maybe just two separate equations. So we have 2 to the power Y equals 27 and 2 to the power X plus 1 equals 6 to the power X and we're supposed to evaluate X times Y. So I could probably come up with a couple different methods. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. We're going to be using logs for our first method. So since we have 2 to the power y equals 27, we can go ahead and log both sides with the natural log. I would probably use that one. ln 2 to the y equals ln 27. And then we're going to bring the y down, leaving us with y times ln 2 equals ln 27. And from here we get y equals ln 27 over ln 2 ln basically represents the natural log of whatever that number is. Okay, so we found the y value. Our goal is to solve for x and y separately because they're not mixed and then find x, y. Second equation gives us 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 6 to the power x. So here we have two options. We can just directly ln both sides or separate the x's and the constants or the exponentials and the constants. Either way, let's go ahead and use the same method as before, just L on both sides, and you're going to get the following. So it's kind of like sta pretty standard, straightforward. And then just bring these down, you're going to get x plus 1 L on 2 equals x L on 6. And of course, our goal is to solve for x. So let's go ahead and everything that contains x, let's put everything on the same side. And from here, we're going to get x ln 2 plus ln 2 equals x ln 6. And now let's go ahead and subtract it. x ln 6 minus x ln 2 equals ln 2. Now, since we have an x in the as a common factor, we can go ahead and factor it out and write this as x times the quantity ln 6 minus ln 2 equals ln 2. And then we can go ahead and divide both sides by ln 6 minus ln 2. But wait a minute. We have a rule that will help us simplify this expression. And what is that rule? You can actually use both rules here, either the multiplication rule, I mean the product rule or the quotient rule. The product rule says ln AB equals ln A plus ln B. And the quotient rule says ln A over B equals ln A minus ln B. The quotient rule is probably easier because 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. So this will become ln 3. So now we get x ln 3 equals ln 2, which means x equals ln 2 divided by ln 3. Okay, so this is the, that's the value of x, and we already got the well, uh, value of y. Let's go ahead and copy that. y equals ln 27. Let's go ahead and copy that here. ln 27 over ln 2, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, so that's the value of y, and this is the value of x. So what do you do with those, right? You just multiply them, because our goal is to get xy, which is the product of ln2 over ln3 and ln27 over ln2. Awesome. Now, ln2 cancels out, because it's not 0, and we end up with xy equals ln27 over ln3. Awesome. Do you leave it like that? No, because there's actually a way to simplify this expression. Now, there's a couple of ways to go about it. Let me go ahead and show you both. One way to do it is using uh, the formula for change of base. How does the change of base formula work? You could also call that COB, I guess, for change of base. If you have something like log, you know, A, log a with base b, you can write this as log a over log b or ln a over ln b. Any base is fine, but the natural log and base 10, those are the most common ones. So this is the change of base formula. I could use that, but this time I got to use it backwards. So because this is what I have, and that is equivalent to what? Let's see how that works. Well, this expression can actually be written as log 27 with base 3. And then this is equal to 3 because the question you need to ask whenever you see a log equation, and this is basically the definition of logs, and you can call this um, kind of b if you want. Let's call this b. And that, be just, that just means 
3 to the power what number equals 27? And the answer in this case would be a 3 because 3 to the third is 27. But you could also do it this way. 27 is 3 cubed. So you could write it as ln 3 cubed over ln 3. And then using the power property of log a to the n equals n times log a, you can basically, and have you been using it, right? Bring this to the front, you get 3 ln 3 divided by ln 3. And guess what? The answer from here is going to be 3. Therefore, xy equals 3 would be the answer. And that brings us to the end of the first method, not the video. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And we could possibly, I don't know if there's any other ways to approach it, but we could possibly talk about the third method, if that exists. I doubt it, but uh, we'll see. So now, this is what we have. And in this case, we're actually going to use exponents. Let's not get into logs because we want to make this method different. So let's go ahead and simplify this first because that will be helpful. We can write this as 2 to the x times 2 equals 6 to the x. And if you divide both sides by 2 to the x, that would give you something awesome. This would be 3 to the x equals 2. This will be very helpful in our expression. So we have this and we have that. How do we use those two expressions to find xy? We're going to find it kind of indirectly. So notice that the second equation, which I consider this one, has 2 on the right-hand side. And 2 has no exponent. And we have a 2 here. So what I'm going to do is replace 2 with 3 to the power x here. That's going to give me 3 to the power x to the power y equals 27. Do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. Now when you have a to the power m to the power n, remember we are supposed to multiply the exponents. This is called power of a power property, or some people call it superpower property, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. And then now we can write it as 3 to the power xy, and 27 is definitely 3 to the third power. Basically, this gives us xy equals 3. So now, no matter how you cut it, you're always going to get xy equals 3 as an answer. Now, this is pretty much what it is, but do you think there's going to be an alternative method for this problem? Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, find one. Uh, well, you can kind of do the following, I think, after simplifying. Oh, yes, uh, there's one way to approach it. Like, I can isolate the 2 from here and write it as 27 to the power 1 over y and just replace that 2 with this. But you're going to have 27 to the power x plus 1 over y equals 6 to the x. Now, do you think we're going to be able to find x, y from here? So something to explore, definitely, but let's go ahead and do the following. We can write this as 3 to the third power, and that'll be multiplied by x plus 1. So it's going to be 3 to the power 3x plus 3 over y equals 6 to the power x. And then I kind of need to get rid of the, uh, well, I kind of need to, I think, multiply both sides by y to get x, y. Let's see if we can do the following. We can write this as 3 to the power 3x plus 3 equals 6 to the power x, y. This gave me x, y, but I didn't get a power of 3, so we probably have to do a little bit more work. But anyways, I think these methods are good enough, so I'm going to stop at this point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.